politi- uh, over to politics. President Jonathan was quoted to while mounting the soapbox in 2011, stated before Northern leaders and the then BOT chairman, President Obasanjo, that he would serve a single term only. Considering pressure now being mounted on the president by the likes of Edwin Clark and other such cabal, are you of the sincere opinion that he would resist such pressure and be bound by his own words, one, act like a true patriot by stepping aside and enforcing the party's agreement on rotational zoning by enforcing free and fair elections? By my up- upbringing and my religious belief, what will be, will be 2015. But my training of agitation is that we must remind people of the promises they have made. So that even when people are going to judge, they will judge based at uh, looking at the issues as involved. Yes, I recall. At the time uh, he was going to declare, even the governors of PDP were brought together to ensure that we are all in the same frame of mind. And I recall that some of us said, given the circumstance of what happened, that given the PDP zoning, that we were expecting that the north or the northern states were to produce the president for this number of years. But God has done his own. What will happen now given the Nigerian constitution? And I recall at that discussion, because we were to sign paper confirming, at that discussion it was agreed that President Jonathan will serve one term. And we all signed. And when he went to Kampala, he also said the same thing. And for now, President Jonathan has not declared his candidacy. And we must not be speculating based on those who, have, who are benefiting from such a thing. I think we are all gentlemen enough that when the time comes, we'll all sit down together and see what is the right thing to do. And that probably many people may misunderstand my stand on saying, I pray for the success of the merger of these opposition parties. Because I want a situation where in this country we will have parties that really will challenge one another properly so that we don't take it for granted that because you have been winning elections, you can do as you wish. There is a purpose for election. There is a purpose for setting government. And you set up government for the competence, for the effectiveness, for the efficiency of running administration. You don't set it up because of a group of people to keep on enjoying uh, to the detriment of the majority of the people. So for me, the success of that merger will look like what is happening in many developed countries. In the, in, in, in the U.S., people look at only the Republican and the Democrat. There are other smaller parties, but these two parties are, have come up. If you look at Britain, you have the Tories and the Liberal Democrats and co. So when you, when you have such a thing, if you look at every developed country, there are these two parties really playing almost like a relay. You do it this time, we have another perspective, you do it that time. Which is good for the politics and for the development of the society. So for me, I really support and I think we should encourage. That's why many of us even cried and said, INEC must do what its law says. Delete those parties that have not made any impact in, at the election purposes. And so that the members, if there are members in the such parties, that they should move to the parties that are registered. I know I've had a lot of arguments, legal and illegal, uh, of oh, that should not happen. But the law, as it is now, g- has given Nick that power. And we are all concerned. If you recall, during IBB, he even by law made two parties because of, I think, the same argument. So I think we should encourage a situation where our parties become very rational, where our parties become very organized, where our parties have democracy within, because that is the foundation of the democracy of a nation. Where a party is allowed to impose simply or hand pick candidates and vote, I think should not be encouraged.